session is a round table and we will discuss the benefits of networks for mayors and municipalities. We have a lot of experts here on the table and you will hear a lot of interesting practices and uh, interesting models. So um, I would like to introduce our speakers uh, for this ta uh, round table and I will start with uh, introducing Ginka Chavdarova. Uh, Ginka Chavdarova is Executive Director of the National Association of Municipalities in Bulgaria. We have also with us Sixto Molina. Sixto Molina is, European, uh, is coming from the European Alliance of Cities and Regions for Roma Inclusion from the Council of Europe. We have Attila Morner, Co-Manager of Urban Roma Net Project from Budapest. We have Crystal Danel. Christo is the chair of the Eurocities Roma Inclusion Task Force in Ghent, Belgium. We have Koster Berkush, a chair from the Roma Education Fund. Welcome to all of you. Uh, for this session, we will have Kalman Mijan, who, who I already introduced to you, moderating the discussion, and I will give the floor to Kalman. Kalman. Thank you very much. Sorry for the uh, uh, few minutes of, uh, of uh, technical glitches, but. Uh, here we are with a great panel. Uh, many people have strong expertise and stake in uh, networks, so we would like to hear from each of you for five minutes, no more, no big long presentation, just what you do and how do you see this network to, to complement your agenda, what would be your advice in, in, in this and all that. And uh, I'm very, very pleased to, to ask uh, my dear friend Kostel Berkus. Uh, uh, he has been introduced by Violetta already, chairman of the uh, Roma Education Fund, which is a multi-country uh, operation. He has been chairing it for many years. Great experience. Kostel, yours is the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, Last night I was thinking if I need to write something about uh, what I'm going to uh, share with you today. Luckily I didn't do it, uh, otherwise I will end up in producing a paper like this. So I decided that I will go for fishing instead of uh, writing how to fish. Uh, I'm working for the Roma Education Fund. Most of you here, including local municipalities, mayors, uh, local experts are in, in a way or another familiar with Roma Education Fund activities because we work closely with local stakeholders, including you as mayors, you as leaders uh, of uh, local councils, but also you as uh, civil society, because I think the two actors together complement each other in what we call ideal partnership. And maybe this is a, a key word to be used, how to build local partnership, a real one, that enable us to take steps in uh, Roma inclusion or to advance <coughs> with the Roma agenda. Education Fund, it, it is indeed a foundation established in the frame of the uh, decade for Roma inclusion and address the needs of uh, Roma children education to fill the gap and to address also the segregation issue. Uh, some country are facing with, with the problem of uh, children uh, of Roma origin being placed wrongly in, in the segregated schools, in schools for children with mental disabilities and so on. So us, we are trying to help you overcome this issue. And I think uh, in some places, in some countries, we have gained a lot of positive experience and we have learned a lot during the seven years of uh, uh, working uh, together with the uh, NGO sector, with the local authorities, to overcome, uh, overcome the education gap. Now, I, I did write last night uh, some key points which I, which I think is very important uh, to be used for the ingredients that mayors and local authorities, NGO sector, could uh, 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 could together or jointly uh, learn from each other. Uh, first point is regarding empowerment, because this is maybe the aim and the meaning of uh, coming together in Medi Network to empower local stakeholders. And we as a fund, we are trying to channel financial resources directly to the local stakeholders, because people uh, 
and those who are in, in the need of resources are, are living at local levels. So the critical actor in this uh, composition are, as you, you all know, are the uh, local councils, are the mayors, are the uh, community NGOs based. Uh, and empowerment, it's maybe uh, too complex to give a definition what, what does it require. It's requiring knowledge, it's requiring dedication, it's requiring motivation for taking maybe one of the most challenged issues, which is indeed uh, ensuring that our communities, local community, are much more accessible, are much more inclusive for all citizens. Because the reality is telling us a different story, that Roma are still living at the margin of our society. I have maybe one minute left. I will keep the other points for the second intervention. Maybe another reason why we think and we believe this network it will be used by, uh, by European Commission, by international organization, by Open Society Foundations, by Roma Education Fund, is sharing the learnings, what we have learned, what works. When it comes to, to Roma inclusion, what works the best? How best to utilize what the Commission are saying to us that there are certain opportunities, funding opportunities for the local authority to be used. So what works? How best to utilize these resources when we uh, talk about infrastructure, when we talk about education, when we talk about uh, housing, uh, employment opportunities and so on. So here I believe it will be the place and maybe during the workshop sessions to share from your experience and us to learn from what uh, works the best in, uh, in setting up uh, uh, a mechanism that will lead us to a better inclusion of, of Roma in, uh, in many of, of European countries. So I think from, from the start, uh, 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 Mr. Chair, this will be uh, the, the, the two points among the nine that I put it. You, you may ask me why nine points. Of course, there are many others, but I think those are the most important that uh, Roma Education Fund believes uh, that uh, mayors and us as international organization we can use for the ingredients uh, of uh, how to build a better inclusion places. Thank you very much. And, uh, Costa has, uh, has given the other speakers a very good example in terms of limiting all those things that he wanted to say to the most important empowerment and uh, sharing knowledge, uh, sharing best examples. By the way, uh, probably we should think of also having in the future an award of sharing bad examples because we all know how easy it is to construct projects in a way that they don't succeed to achieve uh, those results that we are uh, trying, my organization included, we do many mistakes and I think the best is really, uh, it's very good to learn from best examples and the best is to learn from the worst. But I would like to ask now Christel, who is the chair of the EuroCities Roma Inclusion Task Force, to introduce what EuroCities is doing and what she believes in. Uh, thank you for having us here today. Um, let me first tell you how the Task Force on Roma Inclusion came about. It came about in 2011 um, because uh, local authorities were knocking at the door of Eurocities, facing problems as a consequence of the enlargement of the EU. Lots of people moving from Eastern and Central Europe to the Western European cities. Okay. Uh, they were having problems housing the people, uh, accommodating them into the um, labor market. Uh, it was putting pressure on their social services. Um, so we then decided to start it up the task force on Roma inclusion. Um, by now, 15 cities have joined this task force, but an extra value of this task force is that we are also closely working together with other networks. That's also one of the reasons uh, we have joined uh, this network. Uh, we are closely working together with the Council of Europe, European Commission. Uh, now, uh, since June, we have been in contact with the Open Society Foundation. Um, what are the main objectives of this task force? Um, 
actually, uh, we also want to have an exchange on uh, good practices, other cities, how uh, they are managing uh, the situation in, in their cities uh, regarding to Roma. Um, we want to influence the EU policy because um, uh, one of the main things is that uh, a lot of times people are looking at the member state, but actually it are the local authorities who have to deal with the reality. Okay? Um, so they are the ones uh, who have to uh, look for a solution for the challenges they are facing. Uh, so actually we want to work closely together with uh, the cities of origin because uh, over here you have been having years of experience uh, working on Roma inclusion so it's not the idea that we have to reinvent something that has already been invented. So what we have done so far is uh, we have had our first uh, peer review uh, in Berlin on Roma mediators and uh, there's also been a report written on it. We also had, um, we visited uh, the local contact point over there that's also working on uh, the inclusion of the new uh, EU citizens. And um, one of the things we also monitor is that when it comes to the national strategy on Roma inclusion, that local authorities are being involved into the whole process. One thing we have noticed is that they haven't been involved, so we are hoping now with the implementation of the strategy that there will be more attention for uh, local authorities. And uh, last June, we first had our first uh, discussions on transnational cooperation. Uh, what we have noticed is that uh, the cities in, uh, that are part of the task force, uh, they have been setting up uh, transnational corporations with cities of origin. So uh, what we now have in mind is to make that in a more structural way. So not that, not that it's... Uh, the initiative of the cities, but that uh, it can be part of a more uh, structured initiative. And then uh, now in November, we have our next meeting coming up, uh, which will be on uh, Roma inclusion on the labor market. Okay. What I think could be of extra value here, being part of this uh, meeting, is that uh, the cities that are now part of uh, the Roma task force are especially uh, Western European cities. But I do think it's important to be into discussion with the cities of origin. And I think a lot of them are represented here today. So I think uh, it could be interesting for us to sit around the table and to have that discussion on how best we can work together. Thank you very much, uh, Christelle. Um, so, uh, two, uh, two exciting ideas, partnership between uh, uh, cities where Roma come from and where they uh, migrate. Uh, I think it's very, very exciting and uh, hopefully you will, uh, you will pursue this as well as the involvement of local authorities in the implementation of, uh, and I would perhaps add if I may, also figuring out how to incentivize and how to uh, financially support those who undertake uh, uh, Roma integration programs are really critical. So uh, now the floor goes to Attila Molnar, who is the co-manager of a very high-tech sounding uh, organization, Urbak Romanet project, uh, Attila. Uh, uh, I'm talking about a project, but uh, you know, it's a it's a framework what Urbex gives for uh, the cities joining the, uh, these partnerships. It's a nine-city project, the Romanet. Uh, we have um, two Spanish, two Italian cities, uh, Slovakian uh, city, one from the Czech Republic, and two from Hungary. Uh, and uh, uh, we have a partner from France, uh, uh, suburban uh, area of Paris, uh, and uh, 
Urbect, um, Urbect is an urban regeneration network uh, supporting projects uh, from, the, from the environmental sustainability to uh, social sustainability uh, and uh, our goal was to set up a partnership on Roma issues focusing on the youth, focusing on uh, the young Romas and uh, through them we try to uh, engage and involve the other uh, generations of uh, Roma people. Uh, in this, uh, 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 Urbeck pro uh, the Urbeck gives a framework for, for the project uh, and th this framework is uh, just like we have two levels. We have a local level where there are uh, a local support group uh, or the cities have to form a local support group and they have to uh, uh, with this local support group, we ha have to work out a uh, uh, local action plan for, for the local uh, issues. Uh, and uh, after, after this local level, there is a transnational level where there are a lot of transnational uh, uh, connections uh, and uh, we are, we are uh, uh, try to uh, have a lot of mutual uh, learning. Uh, we have a lot of, uh, 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 a lot of uh, connects, uh, bilateral connects uh, about the cities and they try to uh, have, have projects, uh, uh, work out projects for, for the future. Um, but of course, the, the, uh, the, the uh, main goal is to, to have the local uh, action plan and to, to begin a work, <coughs> uh, uh, a strategic work with these communities we have in our towns and cities. Um, and and uh, getting to the finish in, uh, of this program, uh, we, are, we are trying to find some frameworks to <coughs> continue with this work because we found it uh, it's uh, very useful, it uh, makes our, uh, our tasks uh, much more easier. Just we heard that, uh, that uh, it's, it's uh, very important to find out uh, the parallelities, the, the existing models, and uh, we try to uh, find the, the, uh, the continuity of, of this project. Thank you very much. Um, now, uh, I would like to uh, give the floor to Sixto Molina, who is representing the ma most par excellence pan-European organization, the uh, Council of Europe, uh, with its uh, great values uh, when it comes to human rights, democracy, and uh, social inclusion. He, uh, is going to introduce to, the, to you, to us, the European Alliance of Cities and Regions for Roma Inclusion, Sixta. Thank you, Mr. Misei. First, allow me to, to thank as well the European Commission and Open Society Foundations for the invitation to be here in this panel. And let me also today, and as from now, congratulate you for the launching of this new initiative. Uh, I would try to be short as my predecessors and I would try to, to focus on some of the issues already mentioned by Mr. Sardi and how we see those elements to be connected not only with the new momentum that we have now in Europe towards the protection of the Roma community rights but as well linking it to the MERI initiative because I think that there is quite a lot to be do to develop synergies. It is not by coincidence that almost at the same time uh, the Council of Europe adopted this uh, declaration in October 2010 and the European Commission at the same time uh, devoted time and energy to request states to develop uh, national strategies. We can criticize them or not, but at least there is, there is something that has been done and I think that it's clearly uh, a good momentum, as I said because, before, because there is both the political will at national and international level, but as well the human and financial resources behind as we heard before, quite an extensive amount of money available, which allows us, not only you, mayors, but as well national authorities and international organizations, to be 
I guess, in a unique momentum to profit from this entire situation to develop projects in favor of those who are most vulnerable. So, as I said, it is a, a good momentum and we, sh we have to profit from it. One of the changes that we have introduced in, in the Council of Europe is to avoid now working so much on recommendations and on uh, national policies, on monitoring as far as, as Roma issues are concerned. And we have now decided through the declarations to go a little bit more to the grassroots. And this is where all of you present are of uh, extreme importance. So we could have strategies, we can have recommendations, but if at local and regional level you don't want to implement, you don't have the capacity or the financial resources to implement any policies, at the end of 2020, nothing will be done. So this is what we, my, my first message, to encourage all of you to have an active role through the MERI network, but as well through other networks that are now existing, to use this opportunity and to, and to do something courageous one step forward. So, the CARUM committee that was already mentioned before by Mr. Sardi is also changing its working methods. Now, instead of doing uh, national exchange of, of, of policies, uh, we are most uh, directing our efforts uh, to the um, sort of peer-to-peer -peer reviews. That is to say, it's a demand driven by, uh, by states. They select a specific issue, but it has to be specific and we invite a number of countries that have similar type of problems to sit on the table, to visit the institutions, and to change experience. Why is it that in Spain this is working? What the, is the experience in Hungary, in Sweden, or in Macedonia? Let me recall that we have 47 member states, and this is why we would like to profit from the fact of mixing the experiences of the West and the East, North and South, which could also be an important element to take into account. So through the CARUM, as I said, we are now focusing on specific issues and how examples of best practices and policies in the countries could be shared with the others to avoid inventing the wheel, to avoid always trying to find new money, but to use the existing resources in a better way. So, on the one hand, we can make, maybe we can profit from the fund that funds are available at European level, but on the other hand, it is also good to use what is already available at national level in a better way. Not always thinking that it is difficult to spend money on Roma issues, because notably in a time of crisis, this might be badly seen by the mainstream population, but it's the opposite. It is by investing in those who are the most vulnerable that you cr can create links between the entire society in a city or in the country and make real benefits for all of us. The second element that I would like to highlight is one a joint activity with the um, European Commission that is ROMED, which is a training of mediators. I don't want to speak here about mediators or beach builders or mentors or pedagogical assistants, but I would like to invite you mayors of, of cities dealing with Roma issues, not to forget that uh, the gap, as was mentioned by uh, Commissioner Andor, the gap between the policy makers and the Roma community is enormous. And you need to have a way to fill this gap. We have seen, and if you allowed me uh, to, to, to give an example, I was shocked a few weeks ago when I was in, in the Russian Federation speaking to the Roma leaders, and when they were saying, no, I will never ask children of my community to go to school because I had never the chance to go to school before. So this is not in the favor of the community. I mean, it is not uh, to allow them to have access to employment. So there is still a lot of things to be done, and this is where I think that uh, majors of cities should take uh, advantage of this uh, possibility that there is there. In fact, ROMET is, is uh, applicable to all, most of your countries, to make sure that this gap is properly filled, to make sure that they have access to, to school, access to the health services, in particular in some countries where we see that there is a tuberculosis that is once again uh, uh, back. So, and they don't go to hospitals to be uh, vaccinated. So it is the, the mediators or the person that is there to fill the gap who could attract them into the, the mainstream uh, policies and structures. If we speak about the alliance itself, I think that the, the alliance uh, has a, a good potential and should be developed in synergies with the MERI network because, once again, the idea would be to allow cities and regions 
having the same type of problems, the same type of issues, with the same type of resources, be it big cities or small cities, to be able to sit together as peers and to exchange views and discuss on specific issues. I think that uh, hopefully, combinedly in some events with, uh, with uh, Mary, it is a good opportunity for you to sell and to inform your colleagues that there are, in fact, best practices in your villages that are working and that maybe they can be expanded, exploited by other cities to see whether this could be applied in their villages in the benefit of the Roma community. I think that that for me is one of the biggest challenge, but I'm sure and I'm confident that with the, the work of the Mary and the Alliance and other initiative, we will assist all of you in making this step forward. Uh, just one additional second to finish. I am not trying to convince you, you who are here today, because if you are here, you are already convinced that uh, you have to do something in your localities. You are the best audience I can have today to, to say, go ahead. But I would like to invite you to communicate and to uh, share your knowledge and experience with the cities that are next to yours. These are the cities that are the most difficult maybe to convince. And this is once again by sharing your experience with your own networks, not only at international but as well at national level, that we can maybe create this necessary synergy in Europe to make sure that we all know what is there, what is available, what is existing, and to make the most of the existing practice. So this will be my, my main uh, uh, message today. It is important that we all share our best policies and practices to make advantage of that. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sixto. You have spoken out of strong experience and uh, have uh, made very strong points on uh, the need of courage, as you probably all know, when you enter uh, these projects. Uh, uh, also, let's be honest, sometimes uh, majority populations uh, have strong prejudices and uh, I do know municipalities from our experience which did the opposite in order to gain voters. So when you figure out what is good for your Roma population but also good for the majority as well as for your political cause, this is really fantastic. Peer reviews and uh, horizontal learning, peer peer learning you mentioned, uh, we will undoubtedly talk about a lot. And uh, definitely your warning about the gap between the national and the local level, but also often, again, I think you would all agree, between the local level and the uh, segregated Roma communities often time is a challenge and that's why it is so critically important to have a partnership of the local administrations with the NGOs that work uh, with the Roma communities. And, um, and yes, how to convince the others, we all hope that you will, you will really help us to, uh, to learn, yes, you have for many reasons, undoubtedly, being convinced that you have to address the problem of Roma segregation and uh, poverty and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, disadvantaged situations. But how to convince those who are not yet uh, there? It's, it's going to be a huge challenge for us. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Sixto. And uh, we mostly have been getting input from uh, international um, networks. Uh, the one that uh, uh, Ginka Chavdarova runs is a national one, but in our region uh, is an exemplary one that has really been very good in working with, uh, with the municipalities and has shown uh, strong interest in addressing also the Roma issue. I'm sure that it's going to be a long-term, uh, ever-deepening uh, process. So, Ginka, what is your five-minute introduction to your organization and message to the audience? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's really today, during this conference, 
our mayors, local authorities uh, receive many, many messages, many, many advices. Maybe for us, for local authorities, it is uh, time to start to answer <laughs> these messages. And our first uh, answer is local authorities, mayors, are the best driver for solving of Roma problems. And it is not a declaration. It is uh, our reality because what does mean local self-governance? Self-governance does mean that we take our decision with our uh, our uh, local communities, including Roma communities. It is first. If we didn't take, if we didn't manage, uh, next time this local community will be with new mayor and new municipal council. Second, part of our uh, elected members of councils, of mayors, even today, they are from uh, Roma population. It's normal. And uh, it is why, uh, listening today, I realize there is financial resources, European Commission uh, convince you that uh, they have money. But from point of view of local authorities, I want to tell you, where is this money? It is very difficult, very difficult. Uh, to have real information about possible uh, uh, and uh, concrete useful projects. We, uh, we know very well our problems, maybe we have our mistakes, but we have our experience, good experience, everyday experience, how to, uh, to organize everyday services for Roma and for other uh, population. And uh, it is why my second message is more like explanation. Our association of uh, Bulgarian municipalities, we decided to support our members, mayors, who work and in these municipalities, maybe we have 264 municipalities, in uh, 70, 72 munis two municipalities, the Roma population, uh, more than 10%. It is concentrated, good part of our local communities. Work with these uh, mayors, with these uh, uh, municipalities. We decided to support all experience, all good practices. And I invite you today, afternoon, to listen to our mayors. Their concrete uh, experience, how to uh, involve uh, uh, two years before school Roma children and other children, five years, six years, how we received uh, good results three, four, five years ago. And now we continue. And we continue encourage with new results, for example, results about culture, how to uh, 